terrifying movie, which I guess was your your goal. Yeah. I've, I've been asking all the, all of the great actors in this movie about mm. backstory, and mm. um, do you build your own backstory for your for your character? And can you tell some of the story that we don't see about Daniels on screen? Like, mm. what did you build into her story? Yeah, I think. The, all the actors in the cast felt with this film it was important to have a sense really of who these people were and where they came from because I mean I guess we were all taking a cue from um, the you know the success and the impact of the original Alien film because even though you don't really find out much about these people that they all, all of those performers were so brilliant and it all felt so lived in and detailed and and there were kind of the sub-communities within the crew mm. in that original film and we talked a lot about that and of course in our film what's what's different and unique about it is that there are it's made up of couples so there's sort of these natural um sub-communities established yeah. from the start and that feeling totally affected what it was like on set you know you'd you knew that there'd be private conversations going on and like um, alliances forming and stuff, you know, yeah. like. Um, so one thing we talked about in terms of sort of that was uh, um, <clears throat> Amy Simons and Danny McBride's character and uh, and James Franco and me, you know, these two couples that we were old friends. Mm. And so then, of course, you know, when things start to go wrong, you know, obviously it, there's like tra tragedies happening left and right, but there's some that maybe have more of an impact on other characters, and you know that. Um, yeah, that that's why I really like love that scene at the end with me and Danny. You know, as we're sort of processing. You know, you're just surviving and surviving, and suddenly this moment drops in that yeah. what's really gone down on a personal level, and I thought that that was like woven in really. Um, seamlessly in the script, and I was so impressed with that that it could go from the sort of mayhem and the horror to these like little like brief moments of like personal human connections. Yeah, which was which was made it made it pretty real. Yeah, good. Uh, so as we get closer to actual space travel as a world community, and there's all these SpaceX things, we're playing a character like this and playing in a terrifying movie like this. Would that Deter kind of you. Deter you from <laughs> wanting to ever like go on a long distance space trip. Honestly, the thought of the food in space is a reason enough to deter me. <laughs> I don't need to be like haunted by images of aliens. I just I'm haunted by images of like bread, <laughs> bread in space that like is made out of water and I don't know pellets or something. <laughs> So I know you recently uh, got the rights to a separation, and oh yeah. And, For a second, um, I thought you said I recently got the rights to a separation, and I was, was like, like, "You did? <laughs> I did." Like, Call my lawyer, <laughs> and you're gonna, and, you, and you're gonna, um, and you're probably gonna make a, a project out of it. Like, yeah. what? What was it about these stories like that that, that made you like jump into it and want to uh, get mm -hmm. on the creative side of that as well as the talent? Well, um, I'm a, just a big fan of Katie Kitamura's writing. and Her first book was about mixed martial artists, and her second book was set in a fictional uh, third world country that you can't kind of, I, or I struggled to see how I could recreate or turn into movies. So for a long time, I've wanted to adapt one of her books, but I can't play like a male mixed martial artist and I, you know, can't conceive of this fictional third yeah. world country. So this was the first one that I, you know, saw how I could um, make fit it into in. a movie and yeah, fit into it. So um, I then, then I got just got nervous someone else was going to have the same idea, so I snapped it up. Yeah. Yeah. Man, can you tell me a little about the genius of working with Ridley Scott? Like, what, what's... I know you've been on a lot of great projects and worked with a lot of great directors and producers, but what's unique about working on a Ridley Scott film and and the relationship he has with the actors? Yeah, I mean, I think it's always just so thrilling and, uh, to be around someone who's truly gifted at what they do. And I, I found 
there were times on set where I thought, you know, if I if if all I gotten to do was just be a fly on the wall here, it would have been enough for me, you know? So it was sort of, there were like, there was just so much icing on the cake, because just to get to watch him work was a thrill, but then to get to collaborate with him, my stomach has some things to say about this. <laughs> um, but just to get to, you know, uh, to, to get to collaborate with him was, was extraordinary, and um, it's always, it's a good lesson to learn, I think, to, to see people that established and that successful and, and um, you know, even worshipped, to see someone at that level who, who is like truly humble, down to earth, you know, doesn't believe the hype, feels he has to prove himself every time. He's somehow maintained the spirit of a young filmmaker despite all that success and praise. So, um, yeah, uh, it, it was really inspiring to be around him. He's so inspiring. He's just, he's so passionate and, you know, it's good to also remember, you, you, society sort of tells us we have to retire our passion at a certain age and that's bullshit. Yeah, well, Alien inspired a whole generation of filmmakers and actors and I hope Alien Covenant does the same thing. You did Me a great job. Too. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Nice to be speaking with you.